Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Scooter's World. We are gliding over our little hobbit hole area here using the elytra that we found in our last episode when we went to the end. And can I say, it is just so nice to finally have access to these. I've even named them. They're my professional transportation device. But today, we are going to be facing another fearsome foe. And this one, honestly, far more fearsome than the mighty Ender Dragon. This foe has caused more rage quits and cries of agony and pain than any other mob creature thing in the entire game. Today, we are going to be fighting with villagers. Ba -ba -ba. Seriously, far more stressful than the Ender Dragon, I can assure you. Yes, that's right, folks. Today, we are beginning the process of setting up villager trades. One of the most overpowered aspects of the game, to be honest, because you can get so much stuff from them once you've got everything set up properly. But it does involve dealing with these guys, and they're not the brightest. But if we are going to continue our progression and complete our goal of doing everything in the game at some point or another here, we've got to deal with these guys. Now, if you've never seriously worked with villagers before, the key thing to know is that you can trade with them. You can give them, in this case, carrots, and you get emeralds, and then you can use those emeralds to buy other things. But I don't just want to get bread and sell carrots. I want to be rich and wealthy and get all sorts of other really good stuff, like enchanted books. Now, I do have a little stockpile of materials that I saved up specifically for this purpose of trading with these villagers. And I forgot them at home, so I'm going to be right back. I'm going to grab those, and then we're going to get started with making some wonderful little deals. Okay, so I have brought my shulker of goodies. Now to begin trading. Hello, fine sir. I see you have an emerald. I have carrots. Let's make a deal. Ah, oh, what a deal. Yeah, let's uh, get a few more of these. Let's level you up. There we go. Level up again. And melons. So I don't... Yeah, I don't have any melons on me. But melons and pumpkins are actually going to be the best way of getting emeralds from these farmers because we can automate those. Now, we haven't done any automation so far in this world, but now that we've got our elytra, we've made some progression, that's definitely the next stage of the journey. I wanna get some farms set up that take care of themselves so that I don't have to be the one always going and collecting everything. Now, I do have an idea for a melon and pumpkin farm that I've not quite seen before. I mean, the standard one is pretty standard. There's a million tutorials out there on YouTube for essentially the same kind of thing. But I do have a way of uh, using the LAs that I have back in my base. And I'm going to see if I can use those and incorporate them into the design of the farm. Before we do that, I do want to get a few more trades out. Get a few more trades done with these villagers here. Uh, get a few of them set up with more composters so that they are gainfully employed and um, maybe don't wander off. I should probably block off the doors of some of these places to keep them um, safe and contained and in one spot. But yeah, I'm going to get to work on uh, doing a little bit more of the trading here. And uh, yeah, then I will bring you in when we are perhaps ready to think about starting the LA melon and pumpkin farm. All right, night has fallen upon the village. And as you can see, I've got all of the villagers nice and safe in their homes. 
They are working from home, on staycation, socially distanced from one another. So all of these houses are all nice and safe, and I am not totally safe. However, I do... <laughs> I need to get more gunpowder to make rockets because these 21 in my inventory right here, yeah, these are the last ones, and I, I need them to fly. So I'm going to go creeper hunting for just a few moments here and see if I can get a little bit more of a supply built up for my shelf. Oh, wow, that was a lot of skeletons, but as you might have seen there, I was just able to get for myself two music discs by getting the skeletons to shoot the creepers. Not bad. Just ignore the arrows sticking out of my face and out of my butt. But enough goofing around. We are back in the hobbit hole now after trading up with those villagers and setting up a few of them with some melon and pumpkin trades. And now we are going to get the lays prepared for the farm that we're going to build. And to do that, of course, we get a music disc, which I so handily happen to have after that little excursion last night. I shall play the music for these guys. They will dance. I will give them and with the shards and they will duplicate themselves. And voila, I now have four LAs instead of two, which is great. Pop that out. Okay, but I've got two more LAs currently holding baked potatoes, but soon those will be pumpkins and melons. But the next step is to create the farm itself. So I picked out a spot for this and it's just uh, down the path from the hobbit hole in between there and the spawn tower. And the first thing that we are going to do is wade through this very messy inventory. And we are going to set up the collection mechanism for the first one. I am going to build two. There will be one for melons, one for pumpkins. Uh, we'll do one of those first and then I can basically recreate the second one right after that and all that i need to do now is just a little bit of that a little bit of that and a little bit of that just like so so everything will be collected there fall down into the chests and then i'll be able to access them and it is time to go to sleep next thing that I am going to need is a note block and that's the key in terms of getting the allay to pay attention to the setup that I'm gonna have here. Let's put a few of those around just like so and the allays are gonna toss these things down the chute for us. Just got to put a note block right there. Hi. Very bad timing. But yes, this note block is going to alert the allays so they can drop off their items below it. They'll toss them right down in the hole there, collect them for me automatically without having to use any hopper minecarts or anything. I'd, I don't really like having just that endless rolling of parts all the time when we got something like this where the LA can just sit inside the farm and collect things for us by hand. I think that's just a lot more fun and a lot more interactive. All right, so we've got the mechanism all in place here. I'll show you what we have here. So if I scoot under here, you'll see we've got lots of observers observing the ground very intently. And right now they can't see anything, but I will turn that into farmland, plant one of those, ow, uh, there's, there's going to be a lot of that as I go through here and plant all of these, but the idea is that the observer will detect whenever this little stem grows or changes or anything. 
And the stem, oh, hi. The stem changes whenever a, in this case, melon grows. And then on the top, I've got the redstone set up so that the pistons will crush the melons. And then from there, the Allay can go and grab the slices, throw them down the chute here. And we've got ourselves a farm. On the sides, we've got the water so that all the cropland is nice and hydrated. And over the top here, you'll see that I've also hooked up the redstone from the observers to the note block so that whenever the uh, melon stems in the middle grow and produce a pumpkin, melon, <laughs> that's going to set off the note block that tells the LA that that's where it's supposed to drop off all of its stuff. And yeah, then the farm should run pretty smoothly for us here. They're floating right there. Can you see them now? There. Oh, that wasn't so hard, was it? But see, I think he caught that there. He threw them down. They fall into the hole. And there we go. Melons and uh, some torches as well. But uh, there we have it, folks. We've got an Alay inside of our melon farm, happily living out his days in peace and tranquility in his nice cubicle that he can never escape from. Now, of course, I don't want this ugly thing just sitting out here on the landscape. That's not going to do at all. And I also need a second contraption set up for pumpkins as well. So I'm going to get the other one up and running. It'll be exactly the same as the one for the melons. And then what I'll also have to do, of course, is decorate both sets of farms so that they fit in with the area. And once all of that is complete, well, then I can let this run AFK while I am at work during the day and <laughs> collect a whole bunch of melons and pumpkins. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be great. I will bring you guys in once that's all finished and I've got some stuff to show. And then from there, we can continue trading with the villagers and get some other trades set up. I'd like to get some librarians and other potentially useful professions as well. So uh, yeah, we're going to keep on rolling. All right, everybody. The second module is now done and I've gone ahead and done all of the decorations on both of the machines here. Let's take a bit of a closer look at what we've got going on. So as you can see, I connected up the area here to the path and we've got some pumpkins and melons out the front and we've got another little hobbit hole door. And my idea with this is that the actual structure itself of the buildings is kind of like the spawn tower. It's one of those uh, old, ancient, ruined things. And whoever lives in this world, this hobbit has come along, found a very handy little pumpkin and melon mechanism, and decided to put a hole right there. Now, if we come up here, we will see this guy, yep, very happily running around collecting pumpkins, throwing them down the chute, missing, but yeah, he'll get it. He'll get it. <laughs> but uh, there we go. Yeah, I know we've got that guy in there. And as we saw before, we have the other one in there dutifully collecting melon slices. And in the time that it's taken me to build all of this and get it all up and running, we've got quite a few pumpkins and the melons are um yeah they're they're really starting to pile up i have to craft those into the actual melon blocks pretty soon before it starts backing up but i love this i'm really happy with how it turned out and how i've managed to get again that overgrown feeling to the whole thing and fit another hobbit hole <laughs> into the middle of that there uh one other interesting thing that i'll show you too if we take a peek behind the curtain here so underneath the roof section here i've got a line of wool on both sides actually and what that is for is to muffle and block the sound of the no blocks because the way that this farm works the allays they hear the note blocks and then that's how they know where to throw their stuff the problem is by having two modules so close together, 
The Lays on either side might get confused about which one they're trying to reach to give all of their items. So easiest way around that is put that line of wool in between so that it blocks the one lay on that side, say from hearing this note block and vice versa. And that way they each know exactly which one to throw their stuff into without any trouble at all. So if you are planning on using Olays in your own world to uh, collect items in a similar way, just keep this sort of thing in mind. If you've got um, different Olays in different sections or you want them throwing things in different areas, uh, you might have to do some uh, creative work with some wall to make sure they're going exactly where you want them to go. But now that I've got this up and running, I am going to do a bit more AFKing here so that I can get a significant number of pumpkins and melons and trade those up with those villagers we saw just earlier. And from there, I'm going to see if I can set up a few other villager trades, including for some uh, enchanted books and perhaps some tools and gear. Uh, so yeah, we'll see how far we get on that. But uh, yeah, the, these two machines here are going to make that entire process so much easier. But yeah, I'm going to AFK here for just a little bit. And then I will bring you guys back in when I have got some of the uh, other stuff set up with the villagers. Okay, so we are back now in the village. And as you can see, I've made a few changes around here. I've got all of my villagers in my very sophisticated the uh, patent pending villager breeder trading home thing version 1.0 oh, yes i know <laughs> i know it's very janky but this is just the way that i handle villagers at least when starting out for the time being this is my villager trading hall very very sophisticated and over here of course we've got our farmer villagers who i have plenty of uh, pumpkins and melons to trade with and then i've also put down some lecterns and i've got librarian villagers and these guys have enchanted books to sell but of course i don't want quick charge and lure and whatever else respiration too oh, no garbage i want mending that is my preferred trade of choice so what I need to do, excuse me, uh, what I need to do is uh, first trade up with the farmer, get out of the way, trade up with the farmer villagers, get the emeralds I need from them, and then just break the lecterns endlessly until I reset the trades of the librarians and they give me the ones that I want. So let's start here with the farmer guys. So I see... You are a man of watermelons. And now that I've got all of these emeralds in my inventory, I can now start trading with the librarians. But again, of course, I don't like those trades. So I'm going to start. Excuse me, guys. Okay. They're going to sleep. In the morning, I'm going to start trading with these guys and see what sorts of books I can get from them. Okay, rise and shine, guys. Let's see what we got. Nothing, nothing. Nothing, okay. Break these. Just one at a time. You, my friend, are now my best friend because you have... The mending book so i'm gonna trade with you and that locks in the trade so that he'll never change it again which one are you here this one uh how many of these do i need i probably need a few because i need one on my helmet i've got on the rest of these here uh that could use it yeah so i need to buy a few of those but i don't want to only get just the mending ones i want to see if i can get um Maybe some unbreaking free. That's always good to have on your tools as well. And uh, yeah, I'll see if I can get a few other ones here. But great success. This only took, you know, 20 minutes breaking these things over and over and over again. But uh, yeah, thankfully it didn't take hours because that can happen sometimes. 
All right, and you are best friend number two because you have efficiency five. Yeah, that's super duper handy as well. Thank you very much, good sir. Now for you, you're the last one. You're going to give me unbreaking three. I really hope you are. Okay, we're going to make a compromise here because this guy now has looting three, which I do need for this sword because I'm tired of killing creepers and getting nothing in return in terms of gunpowder. So thank you. You didn't give me unbreaking, so you're not my best friend number three, but I'll consider you a uh, friendly acquaintance. Good, we're in agreement. But of course, over time, eventually here, I am going to get all of the book trades uh, one by one, slowly. Uh, Unbreaking will hopefully be the next one that I'll get my hands on. But uh, I'm not going to do that just in this tiny little box. I eventually do need to get more of a formal trading hall set up so that these guys are all in their nice little slots. And uh, yeah, then I can trade whenever I want at my leisure for whatever I need. Um, you know what? Maybe I'll even make these free range villagers i could over time build up the village just enough that they can wander around maybe have well maybe more of a form of house arrest on the inside where they can walk around inside but can't get outside because i don't need zombies killing these guys that would be very annoying but now we've got our hands on some enchanted books we've got mending which means none of my stuff will ever break as long as I have XP and I can get XP from trading with the villagers, which is fantastic. We're finally starting to make some real progress in terms of the progression in the game. I've got a way of replacing now at least the enchantments on some of my tools if I ever die and lose those. So yeah, bit by bit, we are getting established in this world. But everyone, that is all the time that I've got in terms of this episode for today. But uh, let me know what you thought about it down in the comments below. Also, if there are any other uh, farms you would like to see me try to make a lay powered, let me know. I think it'd be a lot of fun to find some other creative uses for those guys. I haven't seen many other people or content creators making use of allays, and I think they are pretty powerful when you know what you're doing with them so yeah give me some suggestions perhaps they will make it into the next video also if you have any uh, opinions about whether my villagers should be locked in little booths or be uh, free range villagers let me know I'm curious about uh, <laughs> your opinions about that I will mention a little bit of IRL news here so I am moving my apartment and uh, just about a month or so so videos might be a little bit slower than they have been over the last while because it, it is just a lot of cleaning and packing but ow I am gonna have laundry machines and a dishwasher which means more time for not doing as much dishes and laundry by hand slowly so yeah hopefully after March videos should speed up just a little bit but again subscribe and that way you'll know when things are back. I'm still going to be doing stuff in the meantime, just probably not every week. That's a, that's a little bit too ambitious for me at the moment. But yes, hope you guys have a wonderful day. Take care, and I shall see you later. Make sure to read. Reading is good for you. Goodbye.